Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to finally create a video that a lot of people have been asking me about. I've made a lot of shorts, and I think I made an older video showing where all the connectors on a motherboard should go. Well, this will be an update to that and all consolidated into one, including some of the connections that I've never shown before. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'll show you each one of the ones separately, and at the end, you'll see the whole set of them installed. And I'm going to actually get this thing fired up and be able to display it for you in this particular video towards the end. If you stick around, that is. So let's get started. Okay, here's the ASUS Prime X570 Pro motherboard. I'm going to be demonstrating the power connectors and other connectors on. Okay, let's start with the main power connector for the motherboard itself. It is right here. Here's the cable that will be going into it. What you have to notice here is this little plastic tab usually on the outside right here, facing away from the motherboard. There is a matching latch on the cable, so you have to pair those up. So if we take it like this, we put it into the connector, push it down. It's not, generally it's not easy, so it'll have to push it down hard and hear it snap in place. Make sure that those gaps are closed. It's even harder to pull out because you have to hold that little latch and try to pull it up steadily. So just keep that in mind. The next connector you should put is this EPS connector here. Now this particular motherboard has an 8-pin and a 4-pin. On very low-powered motherboards, you may only see a 4-pin. Or a little bit more power will be an 8-pin. And in really super high-powered motherboards that are driving high-end CPUs, you might see two 8-pin. So what they do is they give you these cables that are usually pairs of two, okay? So there's a four and a four. The way you should do this is they should latch together. If you look very carefully, they'll sort of slide into one another and you can get two of them into one, like that. So now two of them to make an eight pin. And again, we have the little tab on the outside here and then on the cable itself, we have the latch. So make sure the latch is lined up. In this case, it's a pretty large double latch. Make sure it's lined up with the little plastic tab and you push that in. These are usually hard to do when you're inside, the motherboard is inside the case, so you have to be aware of that, that it may be very difficult to get these in. So notice I have the motherboard removed and I'm still having a hard time. So there we go, especially when you have to go together like that. You snap it down in place. Both of them have to snap down. There we go, like that. So now they're in. Now, if you have a second one here, most PCPUs don't need that. But if you have a higher end type of CPU, 59 series or, a, or higher than that from an AMD, or maybe a uh, Intel i9 or above, you should probably include that one. So the same thing, we have two of them on this connector, on this cable that came with this particular configuration of cables. You just have to take one of them. Make sure you got the, the little latch on the same side, okay? And you just push it into that remaining one right there. That should be a lot easier because there's only one connector going in at once. So that takes care of the EPS power, the 12 volt power that goes directly to the CPU. Now as long as we're at the top of the motherboard, which is what this is, let's get in the CPU fan and the RGB for the CPU fan if you happen to have one. This one on here has both. So there are two, as I said before, two CPU fan connectors, one that says CPU fan and one that says CPU option. That's behind it in this particular configuration. So I want to put it in the one in the front that says CPU fan. It's four pins, okay, four little pins there on the cable and I want to push it into that four pin connector. Make sure you have the guide in the right position. There's a little plastic guide here and on the connector itself. They have to mate up like this. You push it down and now the fan is connected. This particular fan also has RGB. In this case it's a four pin RGB. Now you've got to make sure that when you put this in that you match up. There's like a little arrow that's on the actual connector here, if you look very carefully. That represents a 12-volt side of it. 
you have to make sure that that matches the 12 volts that's written on the motherboard. In this case, it is actually all the way over to this end here. So we're going to slip it down on those four pins like this. And now we have the CPU fan and its RGB properly connected. Now I'm going to install the cable from the case for the USB 3.2 USB-C. And here's the connector right here. It's an oddball looking connector. But as you can see, it, uh, it has connections on both ends of it. If you turn it over, it looks basically the same. So it doesn't really matter which direction you put it into the connector. So I'll just slip it down into this connector here until it latches in place. It snaps. So now we have the USB-C connector in place that's connected up to the case and provides USB-C, USB 3.2 high speed. Okay, now let's cover one of the more difficult things related to wiring the motherboard up to the case. There are four pairs of wires, little wires with little connectors on the end. Three of them are in pairs of two in the same connector, and one of them usually is split between two separate little connectors. So we have to get these into this header right here. There is a legend on the bottom. I suggest you take a picture of it with your phone and blow that up so you can see it or have the manual right there next to you as you do this. We'll start with the two that say power LED. Now, since it's an LED, there is a plus and a minus. So if you look very, very carefully at it, you will see a plus and a minus on the two separate little plastic hoods. We want to make sure, according to this legend, that the plus is to the left. So I like to hold these two together like this. It makes it easier. Have the plus at the top and then feed it right down into these two connectors on the left at the top. Okay. Now we have another one that's also LED related. That is the hard disk LED. That also has a polarity to it. Unfortunately, it doesn't show painted on the front. You have to go to the back and you will see a little arrow on one of the connectors in the back. It's hard to see. If you look very carefully, it's right in the bottom there of the one. So that represents the plus, that little arrow. So let's make sure that is to the left and we put that in front of the power LED. So now we have all the LEDs connected. Everything else in terms of these small wires does not have a polarity. So for example, the one that says power switch, SW, power switch, well, all you have to do with that one is put it right next to the power LED, like this. So now the power switch is right there next to it. Okay? And then the one that says reset switch is the same deal. All you have to do is put it in front of the power switch. No polarity to that. Okay? So we'll put that right in front here. Now we have those eight installed properly. Again, double check with the legend as you're doing it just to make sure. Now there's one more thing I like to put in. This is not something that comes with most motherboards these days, and that's a speaker. I have to buy this separately. You can buy them from Amazon for about $3 each or a group of 10 of them, which is how I do it, for about 5 or $6. There is a polarity. You see the colors of the wire in this case. If you look very carefully, too, you'll see the arrow somewhere. I think it's in the back on the positive. Okay. But they go over here in these four connectors in the back here. Just put it right across the top since there's four holes on this plastic holder and you have the speaker. What that'll do for you, which is what I like the best, is it'll give you the postcodes as you turn on the system in beeps. One beep is what you're hoping for. There are LEDs back over here on the motherboard, but they're kind of hard to read uh, unless you have the manual in front of you. So that takes care of this set. There is other ones here. There's another power LED one here separated that's down here, just in case you have a case that has two power LEDs or the one in the back here doesn't seem to fit properly and you want to put it up here. Since it is two separate wires, you can put them on here separately. 
pop plus to the left, negative to the right. Okay, that takes care of the front panel wiring. Now here are three case fan connectors. And there's actually another one that's available on this motherboard way back here, over here closer to the CPU. That's really for the fan that's blowing air out of the case normally in that direction. That goes at the back of the case. But these three here are meant for internal ones, usually case fans that are in the front or, you know, on the side or bottom, whichever way you want to do it. Here's an example of a white connector for that. It has four pins on it. That's for all fans that are PWM. Which most motherboards that's primarily what they support these days would go into these connectors so you just pick a connector that's closest to the fan and you put these right in here like this make sure you have that little rail thing there so that it's lined up with the little tab on the connector and you push it in similar to what we did with the cpu fan just like that now this connector here is an argb only three pins the fan that I just plugged in here happens to be an ARGB fan. So what I'll do is I'll take that RGB connector, the ARGB connector, and as you can see here, it's got three little pin connectors inside of the holder. We'll take that, make sure we line it up properly with the two pins on the other side like this, and we bring it right down into here, and we plug it into place. Now if you have fans that are a lot of ARGB, which most cases do, most of them come with a daisy chainer as part of the fan. So you have a little cap on it and you can daisy chain this, just the three pins now, to the next fan. You can usually support at least four fans on one ARGB connector. And remember, there was another one in this motherboard up on top. So if you have more than that, you would just split them up. So that's how the fans work. Okay, this connector here is a special one for this motherboard. It's labeled Node, so it's a special option that's provided for this ASUS motherboard, so we'll skip that. Over here is one of the USB 3 connectors, which supports two ports on it. A connector from the case normally looks like this. So we'd put that in here. There is a notch on it, so you have to look for the notch. It's up on top of the lip here. So you have to really look careful to see it. It will not go in easily unless you have that lined up. Okay, so make sure you got that little notch. There's a matching notch over here. So then you push it in this way. These can be difficult to get in and out. And you just gently push it in. And you should hear it snap in place. Again, like usual, make sure that there's no gaps between the connector and the motherboard. Okay, these two connectors are for USB 2.0. Now, most cases will have just one of these, and the second one is reserved for, po for possibly a device that, that uses USB 2.0 within the case to communicate with the software. Be very careful. You'll notice that there's a missing pin inside the sockets. It's right in this corner, lower right from the camera angle perspective. If you look at the connector, you will see, sometimes you have to go this way to look at it, you will see missing pins. So you have to make sure that those missing pins line up with one of the connectors. And you push it in. It doesn't have any tabs or latches, so you've got to be careful about that one to get it in properly. These pins right over here, there's two different groupings here. These two pins to one side, if you look at the motherboard manual for this motherboard, it says that that's a temperature sensor. You can buy temperature sensors and place them in your case. They're usually two pins, there's no polarity to it, and you would plug one into here, and then the firmware and the motherboard will be able to access it. These five pins are a special function for this particular motherboard that says debug. So these five pins here, three on top and two on the bottom, separated by a gap, that's for special purpose like that. So we can skip those for now. This one here, that's a COM port cable connector. You can buy these COM port cable connectors. I do use them in some of my PCs. They are a total of nine pins, but it goes into a 10 pin connector. If you put those in, make sure you get the, the missing pin in the right order, just like there, the, the back row all the way to the right. And then finally, 
this is the audio, the stereo audio. So that connector would look like this. And if you looked at it very carefully, it has a pin blocked out in here. So one of the pins right over here, not in the end, but sort of in the bottom row there, is blocked out. If you look at the connector, there is a missing pin on the connector. So you have to match those up. So we'll put that missing pin to the back and we'll stick it on carefully. A lot of people don't use these, but I do. Just be careful how you route this cable so you don't pick up noise. That's been one of the biggest problems with these cables. Although they've been getting better over the years, they still are problematic. That takes care of the whole bottom row at this point. Now the only one I didn't mention is these, and this motherboard has six of them. Some have less, some have more. These are for the SATA data. So if you have external drives, whether they're hard drives or they're SSDs that are, let's say, two and a quarter inch, you would need to connect a cable like this in order to get that drive to work properly, to exchange data. These sort of just plug in like this, and they snap into place. Make sure that you get the little angle properly. There's a little L in one end of it that's not on the other. So you have to make sure that you do account for that. So look for the little L on that particular cable. And then that goes into a matching L in the connectors over here. Usually putting them up like this does work, but not always. I like the ones that have a locking latch to it. That way I know they're securely in place. To take it out, you would have to push the latch down. So that takes care of all of the cables for the motherboard. I have to put a video card on. So I got this uh, 3060 Ti Rogue Strick. It's going to go in this first slot. I push this little button down here just to open it up. Make sure that I'm off the edge of the board and I will stick it in to that slot. Okay, now we've got to put some power, PCIe power to this. So I'm taking some PCI cables. These things sort of stick together a little bit. Try to get them together. Put the inside one first. Make sure the latch is on the correct side over here. Push it down. I do the inside one first because there's no room over here and there's more room over there. Take another one. I do not like to use the pigtail that these things provide because that's too much current through the main cable. So I'm going to use one connector for each. Let me get it in there. There we go. So it latches in place. There we go. We got the power. Okay. We have it plugged in now, the power supply. Let me turn it on though. Oh, I see some motherboard lighting. That's a good sign. Okay, different places. Let me access the switch that I have here. Front panel. Hit the power on. Oh, there it goes. We see RGB. We see these fans turning. It says there's no keyboard detected. Okay. Well, it went into the BIOS. I'm sure it would work. I didn't have a keyboard on there, but as you can see, it came up okay. You see two fans running, the CPU fan, the chassis fan 2, which is this guy here, over here in the lower left. And we have video up. It's working fine, or else we wouldn't have had it. I have the HDMI connector back over here on the video card. And we look pretty good. It's a little bit warm right now because this room is warm, but other than that, it works. So let me turn it off by hitting the power off switch. And we're off. Now I can turn the power supply off and we're done with the video. Thanks for watching.